Oh, that was scantilating, man. We we really have been providing you guys uh, with a lot of great stuff, and you know we're gonna go to our next uh, deal here, right here on ATG Radio, and we're gonna discuss a former world champion. Actually, he's the current IBO uh, light flyweight light. world champion, and he hails from Johannesburg, South Africa. And uh, I'm pretty excited. Actually, even years ago, even when when we were back at the show in, uh, uh, four or five years ago, I wanted to try to get this guy on the show. Uh, he was the IBO minimum world champion at that time. And, um, you know, him being all the way over in South Africa, it's a little bit hard. He's got a big fight coming up. And, you know, Mike Doss, I know you're pretty uh, excited making this deal happen. And I know, uh, just like just like I know, uh, that Hecky Butler is um, one heck of a fighter. Yeah, the guy can scrap, man. He's a you know a little guy. But, uh, you know, had a, has a big following in South Africa. Um, I'm pretty sure he's wanting to have that following. You know, get out more national. Um, but you know, the, the South Africans love the guy. He has a great style. He's uh, one of them rapid, fast uh, fighters. Not a lot of power, but the guy, uh, you know, a lot of flair. A lot of flair about him. You know, good personality, and uh, his personality kind of speaks volumes in his, in his fighting style too. Okay, I just want to throw that in there that he's actually also his next fight is a unification bout. Uh, he has a chance to win the IBS title as well against Milan Melendo. He's going to be fighting him in his backyard in the Philippines, so that should be a good yeah. scrap. It's going to be interesting. Melendo, you know, he's uh, he's a good fighter too. He's got more power about him. I think it's going to be a good fight, and that's what we need, man. We need more, you know, active, you know, just more stronger fights in the smaller divisions. Yeah, you know, everybody says the bigger divisions are where the money is, and Frank always want to talk about the heavyweights. Well, this is a, the uh, complete opposite of the heavyweights, all the way south. Yeah, no, great fights, great fights in, in these divisions down south, man. That's what we say, the down south divisions, and it's starting to really, really take off, especially here in the uh, United States. Um, been been holding it down over abroad, but um, just just want to let you know we got our, our next guest on the show. And uh, pretty excited. Like I said, we've been wanted to get him in on here years ago. You know, he's a, a superstar out of South Africa, and um, is definitely starting to make waves uh, all across the world. And he returns to the ring on September 16th, traveling. I think it's for only the third time out of his native South Africa to fight, and uh, this time he's going, uh, you know, kind of hostile territory, he's fighting a guy in his hometown, his home country. Uh, he'll be facing Milan Melendo in a unification bout for both the his IBO World Flyweight Light Flyweight Championship and the IBF World Light Flyweight Championship as well. Um, great pleasure introduced to the show right here on ATG Radio, the Hexecutioner Hecky Butler. How's it going, champ? Uh, thanks for having me. It's nice to be on. It's going well. It's good to hear, man. Thanks again for ha- having us. Um, I'm going to go to Mike Doss. Hey, Hecky, how, how you, you doing, doing buddy? No problem. All right. I'm good, 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 and yourself? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm excited for the fight coming up. I mean, you know, we uh, got, a, got a good fight in the Philippines, you know, against Milando. You know, a tough guy. Um, he's been quoted as, I'm reading some quotes here from him. He's saying, I feel no pressure for this fight. No matter how many fights he's had, he's never going to he's never gonna fight anyone like me. I want to advise him not to put his guard down because then it might give him the first KO defeat of his career. What do you got to say about that, Hecky? No, um, um, he can say actually what he wants. Um, I'm not really, I don't really actually care what the other guys say. I go into the ring and do the training I have to do to do what I want to do in the ring. Um, he, I, I actually saw that quote, I read it, and I saw what, what he thinks and what he's saying. But that's fine, he can think and say what he wants. When, when we get into the ring, he'll... He'll, he'll understand why, I'm, why I haven't been stopped yet. Well, you know, you've had a lot of uh, title fences in South Africa. You were a long-running title, you know, title holder. You know, does it seem like all the pressure is kind of off of you now? And uh, does it kind of, you know, make you kind of rejuvenate to be going to this guy's, uh, you know, home country to get his, you know, get his title? You have all the eyes on you in South Africa before. Now you're going to, you know, you're going to the guy's home country to, to snag this. Is the pressure kind of off of you now? Um, I think yes and no. Um, the pressure's on me because the South Af- in South Africa at the moment, the boxing is taking a bit of a, a bit of a knock. There's only one legitimate world champion out there, um, in Zolani Tete. 
So the pressure's on me to go and take that belt, especially in his own in his, in his home country, and bring it back to South Africa. Um, that's a plan, um, and God willing, it will happen. I'm going to train very hard to, to be able to do it, but um, I don't feel the pressure at the moment. I think you feel the pressure when you get to get to the get to the fight night, but um, I'm feeling fine, and there's always pressure on a world title fight. Well, it also seems like a lot of guys in America. You know, we've always been we've been following you for years here in the states. Uh, when you were the WBA champion, you know, doing all your uh, your title offenses in South Africa, and you had a huge following there. Um, but it seems like America is taking a following towards the little guys now. You got HBO that's you know showcasing guys. You got Chocolate Chocolate Tito that's been been focused on. You know, you got uh, you know, the, the, I guess they're going to be having um, a, a new week coming on. You know, next I think next month or in August, or uh, I think it's next month, August or September, they got him showcasing, you know, first fight for him in the States, you know, on that big spectrum. You know, he has the power, and a lot of these smaller guys that have power, it seems like the HBO and other people in America are kind of looking at them. But you've got a lot of flair and a lot of substance when you fight. And you, all your fights are exciting. You know, do you kind of wonder, you know, especially when you were making all them defenses in South Africa, you know, uh, why, you know, they're kind of signing these guys and having these guys on and where your showcase is. Uh, yeah, but um, I think you get used to it. I understand the the American public like the big bangers and the guys that knock out, and especially the bigger weights. And there's not a lot of American fighters that are actually close even to my weight. But it's, uh, it's a good thing that fighters like Chocolatito and them are, are getting the exposure there because it opened doors, it's opening doors for me as well. And it's true what you say, I don't know, my fights don't normally go the distance, but when it goes the distance, I'm in a war. Both of us are normally cut. Um, we throw a thousand more punches almost every round, and, and the people seem to start enjoying those type of fights when it's exciting. Well, yeah, th- this is a big fight coming up for you, of course, you know, and, and, and your division is actually a huge fight. Um, but you know, it seems like there's another fight that's going on the next month that a lot of most boxing matches are being kind of over, overshadowed, especially even um, Triple G and Canelo is being overshadowed because of a fight that I'm pretty sure you know about, you know, between Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. What kind of, are you hearing a lot of rumbling in, in South Africa, you know, about this fight? Does, does South African fans really care much about the Conor McGregor fight with uh, Floyd Mayweather? Um, I think it's it's the same yeah, as everywhere in the world. Most true boxing purists see it as, as a show, and the the normal public out there they they are going crazy about it. Everywhere I go, that people know me, ask me, "What do you think of the fight? What's this going to happen? What, what's going to happen with this?" Um, my my view is, I think Floyd's going to win it because it's a boxing match. If it was an M- MA fight, I would have Conor destroying Floyd to be the opposite way. But in boxing, anything can happen, and one punch can change a fight. Elliot Vasquez, you got a question for Hacky Butler? Yeah, how how you doing, Mr. Butler? Oh, uh, fine, and you, sir? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm good. Um, as Doss has touched up on the McGregor Mayweather, um, there's actually another fight that's the the real boxing fight. This, you know, the McGregor the Mayweather McGregor fight. It's more like a circus act. Um, like you said, the obvious winner would most likely be Mayweather. The other fight yeah, um, yeah. that I want to talk about is the Triple G Canelo fight, which everyone in the boxing community knows that's the fight of the year, and that's the fight that we've been waiting for. So I just want to get your opinion uh, on both fighters and who you think is going to come out victorious in that fight. Well, to be to be honest with you, a year ago I was giving it to, to um, Triple G by a mile. But if you look at both of their last fights, their, their last opponents, okay, um, Canelo didn't really have anybody in front of him that was, going to, that was fighting back. Um, and Triple G had an extremely hard fight against a guy that was moving and a guy that was counter-punching, and that's something that Canelo does very well. So I think it's going to be a brilliant fight and might definitely be fight of the year. Um, yes, I, my, 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 heart, my heart still goes with um, Triple G. But my mind saying it's going to be a close one, but it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, we and, agree. And, and, and another question I have for you. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, I, Dad, I, 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 No, I just got one more question. Um, in boxing 2017, everything changed. Uh, we have a lot of divisions that are hot right now. For instance, you know, 147 division, the heavyweight divisions come back. 
and the division you're at, flyweight division, is it's it's a uh, hot commodity right now. What other flyweights fighting you know, on HBO in a, in a in a week or so? Um, I, I would like to take on it. Which division you think is is the hottest division? Is the division that you're in right now, and and the and the reasons why? Yes, that that's actually a hard question because all the divisions you just said are, are hot at the moment. Even the lightest division, the mini flyweights, there's, there's two two champions that are undefeated, the WBA champ and the WBC champ are both undefeated. Um, I can't actually say. There's so many divisions that are hot. Boxing is picking up everywhere right now. If you look at the, even the lightweights, there's some brilliant guys in the weight division and they all want to fight. The junior welters, the welterweights, and there's all guys that are, can go up and down and fight each other. Um, if you, if you, I don't know. It's, it's a hard one. Um, Everyone says that the, the heavy, a lot of guys here in South Africa say that heavyweight divisions at the moment is the hottest. But those fights, one punch can end the fight. In the lighter weights, the guys fight for 12 rounds, and that's how they decide the winner. And that's why I enjoy the, young, the, the lighter weights um, more. And I think that's where the, where the big action is in the lighter weights, from, the, from the, say, the junior welterweights down. Thank you. Hecky, um, I'm going to hop in here. You know, um, Dawson... Uh, Michael Doss had put um, had mentioned that you know we got a big show featuring some super flyweights here in the U.S. So actually, none of them from, are from the United States that are involved in them. They're from different parts of the world. I just want to get your thoughts on some of those guys. Um, maybe get your predictions on those fights. But um, you know, you're in light flyweight right now. After Milan, uh, Milan Melendo, um, do you have any plans on on moving up and wait? Um, if I can, I, my problem is I'm extremely short. Um, I'm shorter than most of the other guys that are even in my, in my weight division right now. Um, it would be nice. I'd, I'd like to take a crack at it and try and go up and see what happens. Um, but I'd like to unify. I'd like to unify two of the big titles or even all four of the titles if that's even possible anymore in boxing. Um, and I'd like to be a Ring Magazine champion. That's one of my biggest dreams. I'll be the first South African to, to achieve that. Now, to go back in, and the reason I was asking if you would move up the, the big money fights in the, in the lower weight classes uh, right now, it's obviously it's super flyweight. You've got uh, Rung Savai, I can't even pronounce his name, but the guy who beat Chocolatito, they're having their, their rematch with Chocolatito. I guess it's Rung Savisai. I think I said oh, that right. You can, oh, you, okay. Well, Chocolatito and the champ, they're going to be facing. Uh, you got that fight. Uh, what did you, uh, what do you think who's Who's going to come out on top on, in this rematch? Well, I actually saw the first one, and I gave it to Chocolatito, and I think this time he's going to do a better job and, and definitely win it. Okay, and then you have um, Carlos Quadras and uh, Juan Francisco Gallo Estrada. Uh, it's definitely, you know, for Mexico, it's a big fight for the, the smaller weight guys, two of their, their top guys over there. Who do you like in that fight? Well, that, it's a hard one. It's, it's actually an extremely hard one to say. Um, I, I think that one will definitely go the distance. Um, it's going to be a toss-up. It's going to be the one that wants it more. And then you got, you know, he's going to be making his debut here in the United States, but, um, you know, he's making making a lot of waves. And it's actually somebody that, you know, I I thought you would be fighting somewhere down the line is uh, Nao, Naoya Inoue. Uh, he's the... WBO super flyweight champion right now. Um, he's fighting, making his debut against Antonio Nieves. Um, he's obviously the favorite in that fight. What do you think of uh, Inoue? Um, I honestly think he's a good fighter. Technically wise, he's brilliant. Um, I give him that one. It's going to be a hard fight as well for him, especially especially the guys who make their breakthrough in America to get into that market. There's a lot of pressure on the guys, and it's his first time fighting in that type of environment. It's going to be hard for him, but I believe he can take it. And I would love to fight him one day. It would be a super fight for me. I mean, an honor to fight someone of, of his stature. Uh, we have, again, that's one of those fights that I'd love to see, man. But, um, you know, Hecky, I want to ask you, you know, one more thing. You, there's there's uh, Milan Melendo out there. He might be talking a little bit of crap, saying that he's, you know, he's, he's pretty confident about defeating you on September 16th in uh, Cebu City in the Philippines. Um give you an opportunity quote you to uh, talk a little smack about your opponent Milan Melendo um, I've never talked smack about anybody um, that, I've, that I've faced before um, I don't really do that uh, all I can say is get ready for, for, for a truly hard fight I'm going to bring things to this fight that, that I've never done before 
and he, he better be super fit and better be ready to throw his bombs because I'm going to be throwing my bombs back at him. Hecky, give uh, give a you know a shout out, give uh, give some words to the the fans here in the United States, and of course uh, your fans in South Africa. Um, thanks for watching me, guys. Thanks for supporting me. Take care. God bless. And keep on watching boxing. Not only my fights or the top guys, all the boxing fights. We we need supporters, and we boxing needs needs that 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 support base. And thank you, guys, and God bless. Uh, God bless you as well. And Hecky, one more thing, man. Where can we find you uh, on social media? Where can where can the boxing fans, where can our listeners uh, follow you and get in contact with you? Well, it's easiest to go at Butler Hecky on my Twitter account and just hit me a hit me a tweet. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Hecky Butler, man, champ, we appreciate you. IPO World Champ, you got a big fight. We're looking forward to it, man. We wish you all the best uh, in training and, and get making weight and all that good stuff, man. And I uh, hope to have you back on the show sometime after your bout. Thanks so much, Fazni, and, and I definitely hope to be back as well on the show as well. Take care, and God bless, guys. Enjoy. Thank you. God bless you. Hecky Butler, thank you so much, champ. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.